Welcome to episode 131 of the quest lore series, The Path of Glufri. To start this quest you must have completed Waterfall Quest, Tree Gnome Village, The Grand Tree, and the Eyes of Glufri. You explain to King Bolrun that the cute creature near him is actually an evil spy, although he's not convinced. You ask if there are any devices with elven crystals nearby, and he says that Eunoch, son of Oaknoch, used to work on elven machinery underneath the Tree Gnome Village. Gori used to be sent artifacts by his grandfather, which would be flown in on terror birds. He says that you can explore the tunnel in the eastern room, where you should be able to find some more elven devices. You find a puzzle, where you push some big monoliths. You pick lock a chest, finding a key and a book inside. Eunoch notes reminisce on his father Oaknock's ability to work with elven crystals. In the golden chest in the middle, you find a crystal seed and a key. In the crystal singing bowl, the seed is turned into elven chimes. You unlock the gate, getting access to Eunoch's exchanger, and a lectern with a book divided in three chapters. When Bolri, not the current King Bolrun, took the throne, it was during a time of peace, although he feared conflict arising with the humans. Fearing an invasion, he seeked King Helforg's assistance, but Helforg did not want to start a war. King Bolri's advisor insisted that humans will attack. As Helforg reached the end of his life, Bolri pulled a stunt where he tried to take rule instead of Helforg's son, Argonthorg. Argonthorg is framed with illusion magic that makes human food appear. Fortunately, he knew that this day would come. He had Eunoch turn on the anti-illusion machine, foiling the plan and revealing the advisor as Glufri. After this, Glufri disappeared once again. Bolri decided to dedicate his life to finding Glufri and punishing him. Searching a wooden chest, you find different coloured and shaped cogs. Exchanging the right tokens for the right values, you reactivate the anti-illusion machine, revealing the cute creature to be an evil creature. You attack it and talk to King Bolrun. When Glefri left the lands, he founded a city called Arpasandra. He suggests you speak with Long Ramble, who's been looking for the city, and you can start by speaking to Alof Jian Jr. at the Gnome Restaurant. He's been meaning to deliver a food order to Long Ramble. He has his coordinates but can't find them on Dougal maps. His maps are written on dried Dougal leaves. East of the toxic wasteland, equipping a crossbow with a mithril grapple, you go across the river and find Long Ramble. He's looking for the edge of the world. You say the world might be spherical and there's a magical force bringing everyone down to the ground. He thinks it's clearly flat and you don't understand the gravity of the situation. Here you find a spirit tree called Incomitatus which seems ill. You can speak with the tree because you've interacted with Hazelmere's magic before. The tree lost his connection to the Anima Mundi, as his roots are corrupted by the Black Ica of the Swamplands. From a distance, Hazelmere is interrupted from a deep meditation on the future, and he is able to see what's wrong with the tree. He believes that Glufri could be the one involved in separating this spirit tree from the Anima Mundi. Fortunately, the crystal chime in your inventory can help cleanse the tree, which regains his spirit. To the west you see the entrance to a cave. You're inside a dungeon with warped tortoises and warped terror birds, which you run past. At the end of the dungeon you find a room with three high level warped terror birds. After you have defeated them, a cutscene plays. In the next room, two guards press the emergency red button as they hear you approach. You get stuck in the swamp tar and poisonous gas fills the room. As you're knocked out, Hazelmere communicates with you. He uses a special teleportation pod called Megal to get you out of there. As you showed great empathy towards the Anima Mundi in resurrecting the spirit tree, he reveals that he needs more dream mages, saying that you might be able to become one. He also shows that he is able to speak the human tongue. Then he speaks a riddle. Skilled brothers, numbering eight, will assemble to fight the Majorat Deceiver, and they will be heading northwards to confront him. He sees you dressed in an evil garb of night, lightly decorated with ochre, burnished gold, and the rust colors of autumn leaves. Even though you adorn those garments, you remain true to Guthix. Of the eight, only two shall return. One represents the path of the Slayer, and one the path of the Warrior. 
Hazelmere saving you is an important choice as he enters his final years, and he hopes that he has made the right one. You ask about Glefri, and he says that that's a problem for another day. You're rewarded with 30,000 Strength, 20,000 Slayer, 5,000 Thieving, and 5,000 Magic XP. Join me next time in the Season 6 finale of the Quest Lore series, where I'll explain the lore behind Cold War.